abnormal losses and gain. In an earlier episode, we discussed the process costing where a loss that is expected and prepared for arises. In this video, we are going to talk about the situation where the loss that is expected differs from the actual scenario. So we'll start with abnormal loss. This is where the loss that is budgeted or prepared for is less than the actual. So if a business expects 100 units of a product to be wasted, the actual production process produces 110. So the 10 becomes the abnormal loss. The normal loss component is treated as usual, where it is deducted from the cost of the process. The resulting figure is divided by the resulting units to arrive at the cost per unit. Then the abnormal loss component will be charged separately at the cost per unit. A business can somehow control the arrival of the abnormal loss. Abnormal loss can be maybe the negligence of a staff, a machine breakdown, which can be prevented by having routine maintenance and repairs or replacing it with a better one. We assume that the abnormal loss has the same scrap value as the normal loss. We dealt with scrap value in the previous lecture. So if you want a recap, you can visit that lecture via the link on the top right corner. Let's test our understanding. The following costs were incurred in the production process of writing pens for May 2015. We have materials $90,000, labor $100,000, variable overhead $60,000 fixed overhead $30,000. Now a normal loss of 10% was expected. The normal loss is supposed to have a scrap value of $1 each. 100,000 units were inputted. Now the actual units produced were 85,000. We are supposed to calculate the cost per unit, the process account and the loss account. So when we come to the solution, the materials were 100,000 units inputted at a cost of $90,000. We have labor of $100,000. We have variable overheads of $60,000. We have fixed overheads of $30,000. Normal loss, which is the 10% of the 100,000, which is 10,000 units, having a scrap value of $1, it will also lead to $10,000. If there were no scrap value, this section would have been zero. The total cost for the unit will be 90,000. Amount will be $270,000. The cost per unit will lead to $3, that is the two. $70,000 divided by the 90,000 unit. And we move on to the process account. We bring in the unit column and that of the amount. We bring in the materials. It was 100,000 units inputted at a cost of $90,000. We bring that of the labor, $100,000. We bring variable overheads of $60,000. Fixed overheads of $30,000. Then the normal loss of 10,000 units. It had a scrap value of $10,000. The transfer, that is the actual output, which will be moved into sales or storehouse, 85,000 units at a cost of $255,000. That is a $3 cost per unit, multiplying the 85,000 units to be transferred. The abnormal loss was 5,000 units. That is the difference between the expected output and the actual output. So 90,000 less 85,000. The amount will be 15,000. Remember, we said we are going to value it at the cost per unit so that is it so when we close it the unit will be hundred thousand on both sides the cost will be two hundred and eighty thousand also on both sides and we move to the loss account we'll bring the units and the amount again we would have normal loss ten thousand units ten thousand dollars which had a scrap value of one dollar and because it's a loss we debit it loss expenses have a debit balance then we bring the abnormal loss we value it at the usual cost per unit, $3, $15,000, 5,000 units. Then we come to the cash. Now, we had a normal loss of 10,000 units, an abnormal loss of 5,000 units, leading to 15,000 units. Now, we will consider both to be having the same scrap value. And the question said the normal loss had a scrap value of $1. So, it will be 15,000 units at a scrap value of $15,000 and we deem it to be cash. So we credit it here and it will go into the cash, the debit side at 15,000. So when we close it, we'll be having 15,000 units on both sides, 25,000 because the debit side is bigger than that of the credit side. There will be a difference of 10,000. This means that 
Now, the amount of input that couldn't result in the expected output were 15,000 units. Their cost was $25,000. 10,000 units going for the scrap value of $1. The abnormal being rated at the regular cost per unit, giving $15,000. were only able to salvage $15,000 because they had their scrap value okay it means that the difference will still go into the income statement as the loss if there were no scrap value the total of the twenty five thousand dollars would have been recorded in the income statement let's now move on to abnormal gain here the expected loss is bigger than what is actually realized so if the business inputs hundred thousand units and expect ten percent of it to result in a loss 10% of it will be 10,000, meaning 90,000 units will be derived as actual output. If the business realizes maybe 9,000 as losses and 91,000 as actual output, there have now been a gain of 1,000 units. Now, this abnormal gain is treated the same as abnormal loss. You don't add it to the calculation of the cost per unit. Rather, you treat it separately and record it. So let's test our understanding. The following costs were incurred in the production process of writing pens for the month of May 2015. Materials $90,000, labor $100,000, variable overhead $60,000, fixed overhead $30,000. A normal loss of 10% is expected. They have a scrap value of $1 each. 100,000 units were inputted, meaning 90,000 units is supposed to come out and 10,000 being lost. Now, actual units produced were 95,000. So the business has achieved more than it planned to. So the excess will be the abnormal gain. Let's calculate the cost per unit and process account. When we come to the solution, we will start with the materials, 100,000 units, $90,000. Labor, $100,000. Variable overheads, $60,000. Fixed overheads, $30,000. Normal loss which is the 10% of the input of 100,000 is 10,000 units. It had a scrap value of $1, so $10,000. When we total it, we'll have 90,000 units, $270,000. The cost per unit will still be $3, which is $270,000 divided by 90,000 units. Now, when we come to the process account, we still bring the materials, 100,000 units, $90,000, labor, $100,000, variable overhead, $60,000, fixed overhead, $30,000. The abnormal gain, which is the $5,000, the difference between 95,000 units actually produced and the 90,000 expected production. This will be multiplied by the cost per unit of $3. It will give $15,000. In the process account, we value the abnormal gain at the cost per unit, the same as regular product. Now let's come to the credit side. We would have a normal loss of 10,000 units. A scrap value was $10,000 because it was valued at $1. Then we have the transfer, that is the actual production unit, 95,000 units. At a cost per unit of $3, we'll give a total amount of $285,000. Then we close it. We would have 105,000 units on both sides. When we come to the amount side, is $295,000. Let's come to the loss account. Okay, so we start with the normal loss of 10,000 units, $10,000. Then we'll come to the abnormal gain because this is a gain. They will have a credit balance. Abnormal gain was 5,000 units, $15,000, which is a $3 cost per unit multiplied by the 5,000 units. Now the cash will be 5,000 units going for $5,000. It was only 5,000 units that was actually lost. The total will give us 10,000 units, $20,000. Because the credit is higher than that of the debit, the difference will move to income statement of $10,000.